For more on the debt ceiling negotiations this week at the White House, let's bring in former CBO director Douglas Holtz-Aiken. He's president of the American Action Forum uh, and former U.S. Congresswoman uh, Donna Edwards. Um, let me just start, uh, Doug, uh, with you. Is that the most likely outcome at this point, do you think? Another uh, an extension and agree to negotiate? Uh, yeah, I think so. The timeline's very short, and, you know, thus far, we have a House bill that can't pass the Senate. We have a White House position that can't pass the Senate. So all sides need to get together and figure out what can pass the Senate in a bipartisan fashion and still get to 218 in the House. And, and that's going to take some work. I don't know if there's enough time to do that in June, and before June. And, and so uh, a short-term extension while they work out the nuts and bolts is a really likely outcome at this point. The Congresswoman, I... You know, instead of all the hand wringing and, and, you know, 45 percent drops in the stock market, people are talking about and chaos. That seems like, you know, we've done this before. Um, we, we've let it go too long. Does that make sense to you or, or would you stick with that? We got to do it cleanly. We got to do it now. And, and just the, the president sticks to his guns. What, what would you advise him to do? Well, I, I would say right now, I mean, it looks like a short-term extension might be the best outcome for right now. Um, the fact is that I think when um, Secretary Yellen announced uh, a couple of weeks ago that we were going to be hitting this mark in June, I think it took people by surprise thinking that they'd be able to last through um, the next uh, couple of months uh, of negotiating, but clearly that's not the case. Um, what I don't think is negotiable are all of the policies um, that Biden took a lot of heat and, um, and energy to pass over the last couple of years. And so there's going to have to be some give on the part of Republicans. And look, the appropriations bills in the House are already, uh, you know, churning through the grind. Uh, Kate Granger, the uh, chair, announced uh, just uh, last week, I think, that they would be marking up appropriations bills. And so the spending part of this is going to be resolved over the course of the summer. Doug, do you think when the, when the four get together tomorrow with the president, it, will, it be, uh, will it be congenial at that point? Or, or, or is there... <laughs> I, I'm wondering. I really am. Um, I, I'm wondering what it's really like. I know the, the posturing that we see... And we all get so tired of it, you know, and it, it, I guess that's just Washington. It has to be that way. But when it actually, when they all get together, don't you think that they both understand that it's politics at that point? We just, or, or no, could they, could they both, could their positions harden out of just, uh, I don't know, acrimony? Well, I, I think point number one is you're right. When, when four people get in a room and they start talking, uh, it's different than four individuals taking public positions in Washington. So there will be a conversation that has the chance to be a lot more productive than the public posturing. But I do think there's an enormous gulf between the House Republicans and the White House. I, I, I think neither understands the other. Uh, it's a good thing they're getting together to, to have this conversation because, uh, you know, both have staked out positions that can't pass. So they need to figure out which things in that House pass bill can go, some have to go, and the White House has to figure out what they want to take. And so far, I think, you know, to be fair, it's, it, it's hard to figure out what McCarthy's priorities are. You've got a list of policy riders in, in a debt ceiling bill. And that's far from unusual. That's, that, we've done that about half the time. But which of those policy riders are the ones that, that matter to him, to his caucus? Where are the lines? And that's what they'll find out tomorrow. They'll start to figure out exactly how far they can, they can maneuver and still have the votes to get through the House. Yeah, that... Congresswoman, that sounds like uh, sausage making that we see all the time. The, the president's budget that he released, I, I would say, Doug, the same thing about, about that budget. There are a bunch of stuff in there. None of it has a oh, chance yeah. of seeing the light of day. And so both, both sides, but it, you know, they ask for a lot of things that sort of to put a stake in the ground, Congresswoman. This, this is what we believe, but we know that there's going to be compromise and, and negotiations. Do you think permitting is possible? Uh, we heard Kayla talking that that might be fertile ground, uh, Congresswoman. I, I think you might get Senator Manchin, bring him back into the fold. He's still mad about that, I think. Feels betrayed. Well, maybe. Here's the thing. Budgets are aspirational, right? But the real um, sausage making takes place in the appropriations process. And I think that to the extent that the White House can really focus 
um, particularly uh, Speaker McCarthy, on appropriations and where there might be some give and take on spending, that that to me is the pathway down which they'll go. And then they can go ahead and move forward on a debt ceiling. And I'm not saying that I think that, you know, it, uh, it may not include some of the policy prescriptions, but at this point, I think all of the, those four leaders know that we can't default. I mean, that's just, you know, a bottom line. And I think when they get in a room, they will all acknowledge that. I think at least three of them know that for sure. I think McCarthy is in more of a bind because the hard right of his uh, conference really just will not allow him any wiggle room. And that, I think, is going to be the challenge uh, coming out of tomorrow and then going through the next several yeah. weeks.